Hi everyone, it's Dr. Romani and welcome back to this YouTube channel on narcissism and narcissistic relationships. Um, if you're interested in healing, I know we get that all the time, please go to the video notes and, and you can see the link there. This I can only do so much around healing in a YouTube channel, definitely some basics, but if you really want to do the deeper dive, we've got more on that. And something you do need to heal from if you're in these relationships is the sort of public silencing that narcissistic people can do. So let's talk a little bit about what that looks like. So I'm going to start with by saying something stupid and bear with me for a minute. So years ago, and most of you were not born when this happened, okay? But years ago, I was literally just out of college and broke and living in New York City and saved some money, went to a movie. It was like the late 1980s. And a movie came out that was called Working Girl. It was sort of Melanie Griffith's kind of breakout role and it featured a young Harrison Ford. And the plot was basically that she was sort of like this in a secretarial assistant level position, but she had much higher aspirations. And the whole movie was about her journey through all of that. There was a scene in the movie where this assistant woman, the Melanie Griffith character, walks in on her fiancé having sex with their mutual friend. He thought, the fian her, her uh, fiancé thought that, that Melanie Griffith would be at business school in the evening, but class got canceled. She then quickly moves out of their apartment and moves into the boss of her, uh, her boss's apartment who happened to be out of town. Well, then the assistant, the Melanie Griffith character, and the cheating fiancé run into each other at a party some weeks later. They both had to attend it because it was an engagement party of close friends of theirs, not, not the woman he was having sex with. At the party, the two of them start drinking again, talking a little, even have a romantic dance. The narcissistic ex-fiancé was caught up in the grandiose moment. And then he asks her to marry him. He asks Melanie Griffith to marry him in front of everyone at the party. Remember, this is the first she's seeing him after the cheating incident. She makes a cheeky response to him like, oh, I'll think about it. And his fragile ego is so wounded, despite doing that inappropriate thing. And he follows her out and yells at her. And even the people in the audience kind of were shaming her and saying, how could you make me look so foolish in front of everyone? Now, in this particular case, her character kind of held her ground and didn't succumb to his manipulative BS. But I would love for all of you to think about a moment when you were publicly cornered or manipulated or mocked or insulted or shamed by a narcissistic person in front of a group of people and you didn't feel like there was much you could do. You certainly couldn't have a conversation about it. You didn't even feel like you could have a strong reaction because you were concerned about how other people would view it. Or if you did have a strong reaction, you knew that the narcissist would paint you out as being difficult or dramatic. And other people, not fully understanding your relationship, may have seen your reaction as disproportionate. So if you have any of those kinds of tales or that resonates with you, drop that in the comments. Now, this entire video is inspired by some questions we have received. This idea of a narcissistic person using a public moment or being in public where they know you're kind of cornered and silenced. And so they say something really inappropriate. And if you have a strong reaction or an emotional reaction that wouldn't be appropriate for the setting, you can't say anything, so you're sort of felt left feeling sick, biting your tongue, and maybe enraged. And one of the emails, the email writer to me said that this happened, for example, with her, with a toxic colleague. In those cases, you may even be more limited because of sort of the culture of the workplace. Now remember, for narcissistic people, everything is tactical and strategic. So making you look foolish in front of other people where you can't defend yourself allows them to feel elevated. And if you react to them strongly, then they get even more smug because you had a strong emotional reaction. They may also let you down in a significant way in front of other people. Perhaps you keep asking them quietly, could you get the diaper bag? Could you get the diaper bag? And you're in a public setting and they keep ignoring you and you're in sort of a messy, impossible situation. And then you raise your voice and say, could you get me the diaper bag? And people hear you screeching for a diaper bag. It fortifies then their agenda of portraying you as unhinged and them as the long, long suffering one. Like, oh, can you believe this one? Now this happens in the workplace when you may be put on the spot by a colleague saying something like, hey, weren't you saying how the manager of our division would never be able to make our sales quotas for this quarter? And look, we exceeded them. 
and the manager's at the meeting and sort of glaring at you. Narcissistic folks will take your confessions, your confidences, and use them as a weapon or a tool when it will give them a significant advantage, especially in a public setting where there is nothing graceful you can do about it in the moment. If you do take it seriously and actually attempt to have a discussion or ask the narcissistic person to stop doing that or you share your feelings, many times the narcissistic person will say, oh, come on, it's just a joke. Can't you take a joke? That's a classical narcissistic play to make you look overly sensitive and them as just so cool and above it all. And it further paints you into a corner and makes it harder for you in a sort of clear way to say, can you see what's happening to other people? So what do you do? Now, the lady from the movie, she just didn't fall for it. She didn't give him the answer he wanted and walked out on his ridiculous marriage proposal. She endured his rage and ended the relationship. It's a movie. In real life, the key way to approach this is to stay calm. Your calmness will defeat their argument that you're dysregulated. And this is not always easy when you're being publicly humiliated. If it's a social situation and not a meeting where like workplace where you might be creating a problem for yourself if you were to leave, you may be able to excuse yourself and step away. If someone asks you where you went or why you stepped away, they come find you. You can explain calmly that you were uncomfortable. And if the person asking you if you're okay said, oh, I think he was joking, file that away because enabler alert, but just hold your position. Let that person who comes to check on you know that you weren't okay with it. It was embarrassing and inappropriate. And let that person know I'm not going to give them their moment to play the bully at my expense. At some point it is about holding our ground. I'm not saying this is easy to do. But it can be done. But many times our self-doubt stops us. Narcissistic people derive their power because we aren't willing to walk away, shut them down, or shut the enablers down. Breathe in and recognize that their public baiting of you is a way for them to get supply with zero empathy for how it affects you. Don't storm off. Wait for a normal break in the action. Step away. And when you are in private with the baiter, if you want to lay it out to them, you can. They're not going to listen and they're going to make it into a joke. But I know some of you out there say, I just need to state my piece. I need to say it. If you do this, then you're doing it for you, not because you think you're getting it through to them. Now, if the baiting person isn't someone you have to spend time with, then don't. If you do have to spend time with them, then do the whole don't go deep thing. Don't defend, don't engage, don't explain, don't personalize. And the detachment process slowly has to begin. If you can avoid public situations with this person who's done this to you, then, then avoid them. And if you can have an ally at the table with you, maybe a friend who sees it, try and set it up that way. Because perhaps that friend is a third party can shut it down much more easily than you can. And it's a more powerful play because now the narcissist runs the risk themselves of being publicly shamed and it's not you doing it. This public shaming that narcissists do, one person who emailed me called it public extortion or public blackmailing. It's one more power play in form of bullying and baiting. When it happens, it hurts, it stings, and it's uncomfortable. But the important thing is to don't engage it. And if you can find a way to distance from this person, now is a good time to begin. Narcissistic people are eternally walking around and marking their territory, almost like using any chance they can to get an upper hand, to get advantage. When you react, they play it off as a joke. And so if you can show them you, they, or you aren't reacting to them and simultaneous to that, you start disengaging and you can weather the enablers, that's the win. It's not easy to do but it's something you can do over time. And that is the best way to handle those sorts of publicly manipulative, uncomfortable situations that narcissists quite often create for other people. Thanks again.